Uh, so we are in another uh, another Tuesday book club. We will come to ghosts in just a second, but Ali Catchwell back with us for a full discussion uh, of games over the Christmas period with Absolutely, your first book, yes. I think. Unplug those flashing, bleeping, whiz-bang merchant things and, uh, and plug in some paper. A guest said. stuck yeah. in with us. Okay, so the book is called... The book is called Parlour Games for Modern Families. It's by my Fanny Jones and Spurl Sinziris. Apologies if I mispronounce anything. Um, and uh, what are we getting? Uh, we're getting a lovely detailed collection of, of many, many different parlour games um, from antiquity and um, from slightly more modern times, um, ranging from things like sort of picture consequences and murder in the dark and squiggle. Oh, great. Um, and the squiggle. And the mirror game, which is incredibly tricky, in which basically you hold a piece of paper up to a mirror and draw an uh, illustration of, of, let's say, a cat or a dog. Yeah. Um, incredibly hard to do. I'll show you my own pathetic um, attempt at this. That was a cat. Oh no, well that's pretty again. good. I mean, it, so actually you're looking at the mirror. It looks like sort of angry, angry misshapen bear. It does look actually. like a squashed cat. we so <laughs> try and tweet a picture of that. It does, not it? Um, okay, so mirror game. Uh, and are we getting chapters? Are we getting... We are, we're getting chapter headings. Um, chapter headings, like sort of, you know, paper and pens. Um, it's important to, to tell you actually that this is... With a title like that, sort of, you know, Parlour Games and Modern Families, you imagine it's ripped straight out of Middle England, you know, yeah. probably endorsement by the Daily Mail or whatever. Funnily enough, there's actually an Australian book written by two Australian mums. Yeah, yeah, two Australian um, So it's got chapters called things like, um... <laughs> uh, fancy picking plums, or shall we strip Jack naked? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Really? And, and th there are certain giveaways that it is Australia. I mean, one, that is one of a the, modern uh, family. It is a modern family. And one of the forfeits uh, of, of the games is, is, is to whistle waltzing Matilda without laughing. Okay, yeah. that sounds great. So we're getting, we're getting the was. measure of them. Have yeah. we had anything from these guys before? I mean, like I said, they're journalists, but have they uh, been um, writing in... in well, my fan, we, my fan we's, uh had a first novel out called The Rainy Season, uh, shortlisted for the 2009 Melbourne Prize for Literature. Okay. And in fact, this book itself um, uh, won... Uh, the uh, Australian Book Industry Awards 2010 for Book of the Year for Older Children. So it comes with quite a so, high recommendation. I mean, uh, <laughs> given that you did say that you mentioned stripping naked, is it just for, <laughs> for kid kids or is it for kind of across the board, kids and all of us? It, it, well, it says on the front it's from kids from uh, 4 to 104. Okay. Um, there's a great quote by George Bernard Shaw in here that they, they reference, which says, We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. <laughs> Excellent. Fantastic. And can you imagine, you know, families around the UK playing some of these over Christmas? I absolutely can. There was a lovely article by Tom Hodgkinson of The Idler in The Guardian the other day but said that he tried it out on his kids and they absolutely adored it. They couldn't get enough of these games. Um, Chatterbox? I don't... I, do you remember Chatterboxes? No. Chatterboxes were, were strange kind of folded origami-style paper things which um, uh, you, you, you'd sort of manipulate in the playground, you know, and uh, you'd say, choose oh, yeah, your favourite colour and numbers. Yeah. And inside there'd be little sort of epigrams or little sort of messages, sort of jokey messages. I remember playing this uh, Chatterbox. I remember I made a Chatterbox when I was at a, um, a play centre. Um, you remember play centres? Yes. No, I don't know if they still have them, you know. When you're in the summer you holidays from, from, from school term, you go to a play centre. This play centre happened to be an incredibly Catholic play centre. Very, and back in the 70s, Catholicism was still quite fire and brimstone for the little kids. And I remember God, one of the... What did your um, chatterbox involve? Well, I remember one of the chatterbox things I wrote in there was, um, haven't you shaved this morning? You know, I thought that was quite funny as, as, as an eight-year-old, you know, <laughs> giving that to another kid. And I tried it out on, a, on one of the girls who actually went to this incredibly Catholic school. She must have been about seven or something and she got the haven't you shaved this morning sort of message and she looked at me and she said you are going to burn in hell I, I can imagine <laughs> just all sorts. Very being, scary, uh, terrifying. Yeah, coming um, after Chatterbox. So what was your favourite, any of them in there? My, no, well enough, my two favourites aren't in there, probably because one of them is actually a, a designated board game called Articulate. Oh, OK. Uh, do you know good. Articulate? Yeah. Fact, uh, I think a lot of people listening will, will, will have heard of Articulate and love Articulate. Um, and your book game. And my, the book game, which isn't in here uh, either, which I always play with my girlfriend's family over Christmas, which is a fantastic game. Um, and basically what it is, is you get a bunch of books and someone writes down the actual first line of the book and, and, and they're, they're the bank, if you see what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And everyone else has to guess what the first line 
of that book would be, judging by genre or title or, or sort of book it is, or the description on the back, you know. Yeah. And you can write sort of funny or satirical sort of ones. And then you have to pass off your one as the actual first line of that book. It's, it's quite involved. Absolutely brilliant. The yeah. book game. Okay, Hilarious. well, maybe that will make it to Parlour Games for Modern Families too. Uh, we will come on to the very English ghost uh, after this, which uh, begged to be played. It is Summer Camp's Ghost Train on six now. Yeah, 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 we're scaring each other all already with all kinds. Okay, so just dim the lights. It is time for Ghost O'Clock. Uh, so, Ali, you reckon that you've seen one? I have, yes, indeed. About ten okay. years ago, um, I was walking through... Give us the context, yes. Walking through Marion Park, which is in Greenwich, and just off the Woolwich Road, which people might remember from the film Blow Up, which okay. is where David Hemmings first spots Vanessa Redgrave. It's a very, very strange place, very primord primordial, very fairy tale, very strange and primitive. Um... And very quiet in there as well, which is it's very odd because, you know, away from the bustling noise, the bullet trail. I was going to say, it's... I mean, there's, there's a straight... All you can hear is a kind of sort of rustling through the, through the trees, but that's pretty much it. Very, very odd place. So I recommend anyone to go there, especially in winter. It'll be really, really quite creepy, but in a good way. Um, and while I was walking through there, doing some research on a book I was writing at the time, um, I saw a strange sort of sorrowful figure, your classic sort of translucent number, hunched, <laughs> hunched by the top path. Um, and I wasn't actually sort of freaked out because I thought this park is so strange and so unusual. It got, that, kind that, of struck you as it... it well, that, it was quite fitting, it was quite appropriate. Yeah. I mean, frankly, I would have been surprised when I'd not seen it. Yeah, exactly. It sounds I mean, like I mean, <laughs> with the setup alley. Well, well, actually, one of the things about that park as well is it has an area in it called the Hanging Woods, and, and Samuel Pepys often used to speak of his, of his terror and fear of visiting Marion Park, because it's, as you wander through the place... Because that of its history. Well, it, it, it did have an assizes there, it did have a gallows in there, and as you wander through the park, that you become aware that something sort of psychically disruptive has, has happened there, and, and so, as I say, I wouldn't have been at all surprised you know, to, to see this thing, and, and, and frankly, there it was. And you did. Oh, Ali. Okay, well, Rich from Berkhamstead says, I once saw the ghosts of two old women who used to live in my mate's house in the countryside on the outskirts of Cambridge. We were coming back through a field at the back of his garden as we walked up the lawn. I saw the faces of the two old women looking at Ooh. us from the landing stair window in the old part of the house. I mentioned this to my mate as we walked, and he brushed it aside. Oh, it's just Poppy and Betty, <laughs> the two sisters who lived in this house. And apparently, spinsters were born and died in the house many years before. Uh, my mate went on to tell me sometimes they heard a noise of a bird scratching at the bedroom windows in the old part of the house and they believed it was the spirit of Poppy trying to get back in. Wow. She died out in the, in the hospital outside and she was oh. trying to get back to her sister's side. Rich, I'm not oh, sure whether to say thanks for sharing or not. Um, and uh, one of you has been in touch actually saying you worked on Most Haunted for a few years. We're back to the other side of the supernatural. <laughs> uh, you'd think that that would be a dead cert for paranormal activity, not a sausage. No. Uh, but you are saying, not surprisingly, I'm withholding my name. Come on, fess up. <laughs> so what have we got with our ghost book? This is by Peter Ackroyd, uh, who is a sort of one-man publishing uh, cultural historian industry, uh, and looks like something out of Dickens himself, actually, which is fitting, because he's written biographies of, of people like Dickens and Blake and Shakespeare. Uh, uh, and what do we cover in The English Ghost? In The English Ghost, it's a collection of true-life uh, English-based anecdotes through the ages from medieval times uh, to the present day, um, all about hauntings. And it's got sort of sub-chapters dividing with sort of haunted houses, poltergeists, and animal spirits. So these and... are gathered from real sources, aren't they? Oh, yeah, they're gathered from things like sort of newspapers and manuscripts and old letters and things like that. Oh, I'm not like He's obviously already. spent some time in the British Library. Yeah, yeah. He's Is had he... quite a busy year, actually, at Croyd. He's, he's got another book out called The Death of King Arthur. It's another translation of the oh, He's been author. deep in the British Library, hasn't he? So, mm. um, scary or not, the English ghost? What's your... Do you know what? I, as I was reading through it, I thought, this isn't scary at all. I mean, uh, apart from, you know, there are various things set in the Victorian times, and I thought, well, you, there's actually scary things written by the Victorians, you know, people like M.R. James and Henry James, and I thought, well, this is very scary at all, it's quite dry and bitty, really, and about four o'clock in the morning when I finished it, you know, and all prepared to go to bed, and various noises started occurring throughout this yeah. admittedly rather superannuated house we have. Um, and it just scared the living Nancy out of me, quite honestly. <laughs> so, so ultimately, I think it does do its job. It is, the English ghost. Uh, and of course, we also looked at uh, parlour games for the modern families. Ali Catterall, thank you very much. Merry Christmas, uh, by the way. Merry Christmas. Final the, time we'll see you before Christmas. Uh, and we'll see you in the new year.